I've been meaning to do this video for quite some time, and this is nothing new. This is something that's been pretty well documented and well known, but I just never really got to say my piece about it or just share my opinion with it. Uh, it's about Lydia and Hex Gear. So right off the bat, if you already know about it, don't want to listen to it, feel free to leave. Or there's timestamps down below. Don't want to waste your guys' time. This has been relatively life-changing for me. I put Lydia in Cursed Gear. Cursed Gear used to be pretty bad. I think it was just you placed heal reduction. If I remember for the longest time, it was complete crap. And then they buffed it. And then all the times that I sold Cursed Gear because I thought it was absolute shit, I kind of regret it because now it's pretty damn good, right? Curse Gear, 50% chance to place a Hex debuff for two turns. Where is this most applicable? In Hydra. I did a video on my current Hydra team for normal, um, and it does reach the turn limit, so here you can see that she is in my regular Hydra team. And this has bumped my damage up significantly. And the main reason Cursed Gear works so well and allows me to do more damage is specifically because the Head of Mischief has a 75% chance to redirect an enemy attack onto another random head. Three out of four times when you try to target the head, especially if you're using somebody in Hydra that uses an A1, if you try to attack the head of mischief, you will more likely than not be unable to directly attack that head that you were initially wanting to, um, the head of mischief. The other thing that this thing uh, that this head does is that when he whenever he attacks, he steals buffs, all of them, and then turn meter. And then the next move is he's going to spread it around. You can't target this head unless you have Hex. If you have somebody like Mithrala or Michinaki, then maybe this isn't that applicable to you. Maybe you have champions that already do AoE Hex. But still, I think having Hex on a champion, especially if you're, if you're struggling in Hydra, is a good idea. I put Hex on my uh, Venus as well. And that, that brought my, my nightmare damage up uh, as well. So before I go into the run, let me go ahead and break down the, um, the stats for you guys in case you're curious um, about specific pieces of gear, mainly with Lydia, focusing on her accuracy and her speed and her survivability. So you see we have accuracy on the chest, speed on speed with the glove, uh, with the boots, and then we have um, survivability stats on the uh, glove here. Then we have our, our ring, our amulet, and of course accuracy on the banner. Before this, I was running her in all perception, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. But the benefits of having uh, curse gear definitely outweigh going faster because I was pumping like uh, 300 speed and a lot more accuracy on her before, but I dropped that to do more damage in Hydra. During my initial recording, I forgot to mention this, but Hex also spreads out the damage across all the heads. So if you have Hex on multiple Hydra heads, then all of those heads that have Hex on them are going to receive a portion of damage, the initial damage that you uh, place on one head. So let's say you uh, have Hex on all four heads and you attack one head with a single hitter A1 all of the other heads are going to be receiving that damage. So you'll see at the end of this video that, um, what's it called, that Lydia actually does more damage than even Inquisitor Shamael. I think she does like 80 million. And so I definitely go out of my way whenever there is a 2x for Cursed Gear, there's a two times chance for Cursed Gear, I definitely go out of my way to do Ice Golem, even if there is no event for it, like an actual like fusion or anything for it, because sometimes they do uh, 2x events when it's there's no fusion or something, but I still go out of my way to do this, just like I do go out of my way for a 2x for Speed or a 2x for Savage Gear. So if you're on the fence about whether or not you should bother Working towards Cursed Gear, I, I do think that it's something you're going to want to think about relatively soon because the more Cursed Gear you can get, the more access to the higher levels of Hydra that you're going to have. So let me go ahead and run this team and I'll talk through it and then I'll show you guys the, the very end of it as well. Just want to show you guys real quick. There it is. So now the Hex is on here and you can see that we will be able to target it. It also happens to be that if you have a bunch of AoE uh, nukers, you're probably going to do well regardless, just because, you know, if you, you don't have to worry about 
single targeting this head if all of your champions do AoE moves. So, actually, I should I should have started with the A1 on Rathalos. But let me let me show you guys Shamayo. Uh, okay, never mind. Boost the speed here. Boost turn meter. And now, normally, you wouldn't be able to target this head, and you could see the passive proc. But this time, you're gonna see we were able to target it. I'm gonna show you an example without the hex, so you guys can see what that looks like. All right, so here we are. Same thing. And let's try to target this head. See, it says the passive procs, and we get redirected. So definitely get Curse Gear on Lydia. If you can get Curse Gear on other champions that do AoE moves, you could definitely get some benefit from that. Like, if you get Hex Gear on um, Venus, for an example, that'd be really good. If you get Hex or Curse Gear on um, Nekmothar, Nekmothar would be a really nice champion to have Hex Gear on. I just did a video on him in Provoke Gear. But if you have a decent Provoker, like somebody commented that they have Krisk, Krisk is probably a better, um, more so reliable Provoker. In fact, um, when it comes to Krisk, Nubkex came out with a video. This was, uh, what was this? Two months ago, actually. He, he came out with a video talking about Krisk in a Hex set. And this is actually ingenious because on Krisk's A1, it's an AoE. So Chris would actually be superb, kind of like Nergigante Archer who places uh, both the Provoke and the Hex. Chris could do the same thing because Chris has the Provoke on his um, uh, skills, in his skills. I mean, even Molly could be a better Provoker if he could get her faster, uh, fast enough. But uh, I, I just, I personally like using Nekmothar as, as, a, as a Provoker. And uh, you could use him as a as a cursed uh, hex user because both of his moves are going to be aoe and this allows you to do more damage in hydra oh and uh just so you guys know i do not give a flying fuck about hydra anymore like literally no fucks are going to be giving any flying lessons today i mean i still enjoy doing hydra but i don't actually care about the score so that's why i go out of my way to make sure i have everything on auto so all my my Hydra teams are on full auto, where I can just set it, forget it, and walk away, because the worst thing you can do is spend like an hour or something trying to manual a run, and then you don't get the score that you want, so then you have to like redo it again. But yeah, with Lydia, uh, everybody was able to do a lot more damage, and I don't think that Rathalos or Razzlevarg or any of these guys could have hit the turn limit and done as much damage as they possibly could have had Lydia not been in cursed gear. Also, this was done on my phone. My wife and I were just watching TV together. That's why I took a screenshot and uploaded it here because I didn't have uh, my computer on at the time.